What up? For those of you that need me to get right to the point, I will. And that is my recommendation for Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, for those of you that are the main target audience members that are into the series and really love it, be loved, and all that kind of good stuff, you should watch at least the first two episodes of the series. And for casual audiences that don't really know what's going on with this series and don't really know if it's worth your time, I'm also going to tell you to watch the first two episodes of this series. Hopefully you stick around so that I can go ahead and actually give you my reasons why I'm going to go and actually recommend not one episode, not for you to skip it, but for to watch the first two episodes. So stay tuned and let's see if we agree. I thought you firebenders had some guts. I know where this will all leave. Well, thank you for coming on back. Now, let me just go and actually preface this by saying, honestly, if you are a true fan of Avatar, you're going to watch the whole first season. I don't care. It is what it is. But I'm trying to be objective and tell you based off of what I am going to go ahead and actually observe on here to go ahead and actually just give you the aspect of what you're looking at overall and, and what's the recommendation for you. Okay. So let's get into this review. Avatar The Last Airbender is an action adventure series, really like a fantasy type series that actually premiered in February of 2024 on Netflix. It has eight episodes in the first season. They're averaging roughly about 55 minutes a piece. Now it stars Gordon Cromier as Aang, Kai Wintio as Katara, I totally apologize if I murdered her name. Ian Osley as Sokka. And then some other notables in this series is Daniel Day Kim as Fire Lord Ozai. And Ken Long as Commander Zhao. So when I look at everything out there, those are the people that are into it. And IMDb has on their website describing the series as this. A young boy known as the Avatar must master the four elemental powers to save the world and fight against an enemy bent on stopping him. Now, this series is based on the beloved animated series producing from Nickelodeon in, I believe, like 2004. And there was a live action remake that was done in 2010 by M. Night Shyamalan. So, when I go ahead and actually look at this particular series, I absolutely adore the original animated series. I watched it with my son. It's one, It was one of our favorite shows watching when he was growing up. And I absolutely love the characters, love everything about it. So... I take the position of being the main target audience for this, meaning that I'm all on board with it. I'm not a casual viewer or anything like that. So I'm a little bit more skeptic. I'm a little bit more critical of this series than a casual viewer. And the reason why I tell you that is because you should always know the perspective of your reviewer when you are taking into account somebody else's opinion. Okay. So there you have it. I tell you my biases right up front. And for me, I go and actually watch the first two episodes of brand new content on all the streaming platforms. I watch stuff so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe. And now let's do a deep dive on Avatar. So before I go ahead and actually watch the first two episodes, I kind of go ahead and actually give out my expectations because I'm a main target audience member. So I have certain expectations that I think need to be conveyed when watching this series for the first time. So here it is. First and foremost, just like all of us nerds are with any type of uh, IP, is be as faithful to the source material as you can. We understand that because live action is a different medium, it, you may not be able to adapt everything, but stick to the source material as close as possible because that's what endured us in in the first place. So try and stick with that if you can. My second expectation is to go ahead and actually get the feel, the look of the universe right. I mean, it's one thing to go ahead and actually mess up on a story. It's another thing to go ahead and actually drop the ball on the way that we visualize it. If it's not coming from a book, meaning that it's coming from an animated show or another movie or anything like that, we've been given certain designs, we've given certain expectations. Try and replicate that as best as you can. The third aspect of it is to go ahead and actually keep the heart and emotions of this. The original animated series was so lauded because it had heart, because it had emotions, and it was especially deep, especially for a kid's animated cartoon or what have you. And so you want to keep that aspect of it, and that's what I expect to see in this particular series. Of course, last but definitely not least is I want to see some cool fight scenes, some, school, some cool action scenes. When I'm talking about the bending, when I'm talking about the martial arts and things like that, I need it to go and actually look cool. If you're not looking cool, it's going to really bring down the overall tone of this entire series. So those are the expectations that I go ahead and actually have going into this series. 
So I hope they hit those expectations. Now let me go ahead and actually go watch the series. And then, well, I'm only going to watch the first two episodes um, to give you an accurate review. And then hopefully it lives up to the billing. So let's see what we got. All right. So um, I'm back. And when I come back from a series, it's kind of, you know, my thoughts off top as far as what do I compare this series to. There's nothing else I can quite compare it to other than its own iterations. So I will say that this particular series has three different levels to it. There is some good, meaning kind of like the animated series and uh, nods to that and, and things of that that I really like from like the animated series. There is the bad. That was the 2010 movie. There are some elements of that in here. And honestly, most of, most of it is right in the middle. It's own iteration. It's its own self in this particular live action uh, TV series. And it's kind of like a mixed bag with that. So that's what I kind of compare it to is that it's, it's all the different iterations in and of themselves into this particular series. I'll try and make it make sense. Okay. Um, so some of my thoughts uh, of watching those first two episodes. Um, in the first episode, the opening scenes um, with the, the uh, I, I do non-spoilers here, so the opening scene that's like the chase scene or whatever, that actually was done very well, and it really kind of was a good way to go ahead and actually enter this world and really kind of, you know, set the tone or what have you. I really like that. The fact that the story is going linear instead of there are some things that are flashback to in the original animated series. In this case, we're going and actually going linear and that's a different way to go about it. And I think I kind of like that. I think I like that storytelling. I'm a fan of telling stories linear as much as possible. And they went with that way here. Um, and it was honestly very, very awesome to go and actually see the nomads and then the nomad scene, the air nomads and uh, their whole scene on there. I really liked that overall in the first episode. In the second episode, Anybody who is a target audience member will go ahead and actually, this is where you start to go and actually feel whether you're talking about the medium, the timing, budget, um, story sake or whatever. They started combining stories together in order to move and progress forward to have you. And it's definitely noticeable for any main target audience member. Um, you know, you, you kind of see it a little bit in the first one, but definitely in the second episode. And it's noticeable. Uh, the Kiyoshi Island scenes and scenery was, was actually done really well i like that whole setup that they did for that and the way that the settings were i, I really like that uh the relationship with saka and suki actually what well, i thought was kind of cute i like the way that they went and actually did it i know some people there was words on the internet as far as you know where they're going to take away like some of like saka's uh character uh character development as far as kind of he was kind of like a little bit of a uh misogynistic and all that kind of stuff and he kind of his story develops but the way that they presented the relationship in this i think is perfectly fine i liked it the avatar state is redefined in this a bit not sure if i like it it's definitely different in the way of, of going into it and things like that uh hopefully you know when we get further along in the series or what have you it, it'll be a little bit different I'm not really sure how i feel about that and then the last aspect of the action scenes on kiyoshi island were actually fun and and well choreographed i really like those and i think that was done very well so in the first two episodes you, you'll kind of see that i'm speaking sticking to some of the the plot points or what have you there are some things within those first two episodes that didn't really stand out to me for like Prince Zuku and Uncle Iroh. That dynamic was okay. Um, I think we'll get better with that as the series goes along. But in these first two episodes, there wasn't a lot to go and talk about there. So I'm not going to stress on that too much. I'm not going to give too much commentary. I'll just kind of say it was kind of like mid for those. So I just want to kind of give you my thoughts on that. Um, so let me kind of deep dive a little bit more and pick it apart just a little bit more so that you can really kind of understand my thought processes here. So storytelling, when I'm looking at storytelling for this show, it's really going ahead and actually, it's a tale of two different shows, right? Because for target audience members, there is a lot of combining stories and elements from various different episodes on there and combining them in there to go and actually make it plausible for this series because this is a medium of only eight episodes roughly going about 50 55 minutes a piece and telling something that was told in an animated style of 26 episodes 
each going about it was a half hour episodes and things like that and it's animated so some stuff you're just gonna have to cut and do all that kind of stuff and we kind of have to accept that doesn't always mean that it works out great doesn't always mean that it's horrible either and really what it kind of i think what kind of spurs people one way or the other is that if they cut out certain elements or stories or things that you really liked about it that's where the target audience members are really going to have a rough time with this. I can see why people could be disappointed with it because you missed some of it. And there's some stuff in there that I didn't like that they cut out too. And it is what it is for a casual viewer. I think that they're going to be fine with the way that the story is being told. It's a little fast paced. They get into it and they kind of just go. So I think the pacing for it overall is actually done very well in the medium. I think the, the concept and, and things like that as far as the fantasy world that they're building is perfectly fine in this as far as the storytelling. The one thing that I will go and actually say that I think both main main audience members and casuals are going to notice is that there are definitely some plot holes in the storytelling and the script here to kind of really flesh out some things and how they go and actually happen. And that I can't excuse. Like, how did Aang break out of that ice at that particular time? In the animated series, it was actually clear how and why it actually happened. In this one, it just happened inexplicably. It was weird. Um, Aang is actually told by the uh, by they're, they're, they all kind of go ahead and actually let him know that he's like the last Amberger, and he seems to kind of accept it and things like that. But then he's like, "Let's go to my home." That doesn't make sense logically from this the standpoint. I mean, you can say that he's kid and everything like that, but the way that they set that story up and the way that he accepts what he is, who he is and all that kind of stuff, it just doesn't make sense of how they went and actually did that. Um, Aang just goes and actually connects to his past selves just off rip. That's actually something that I can't, that's a plot hole right there. Like all of a sudden you could just jump and just do it and all that kind of, and that doesn't work. And then how did, how does Sokka and Katara get Appa to fly when we know that you have to go and go yip yip and get him to fly or what have you when to go and actually save him off the fire ship Zuko's fire ship when they had never heard Ang oh my god I did that out there when they had never heard Ang say yip yip um doesn't make sense plot holes and there's plenty of other ones in there and so that from the storytelling i can't forgive those aspects of it uh the, the pacing and all that kind of stuff and cutting things down for medium perfectly fine plot holes eh, kind of grates on me a little bit on there and so that's one of the things that kind of you know brings it down but overall from looking at it from both points of view and, and kind of accepting the medium as it is i'm gonna go and actually get storytelling a b minus for this series so what can i say about acting uh first and foremost the acting in this series miles ahead of the 2010 movie also the casting is miles ahead there's uh if they don't look exactly like the animated characters they are very close in resemblance what have you you definitely gonna actually like that aspect of it now also understand the 2010 movie was so bad that saying that this is a step up isn't that difficult Okay. Now, I will say I liked the actor portrayal of uh, Maria Zhang as Suki. I really liked her character. I liked her interaction with Sokka. Um, and I think that that aspect of it, that that portrayal, I really liked it. And I, and I was a fan of that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and actually say that everyone else in this series is either mid, kind of decent, or going towards the bad side. Now, it's not like they weren't trying. I could see the effort. I could see that people were really trying or what have you. It's not always, you know, it's not always easy to go and actually do and replicate um, certain situations. I mean, it's hard to capture like the charm of an animated show. It definitely is. But here's the thing is that I didn't go ahead and actually feel the gravitas. Like if you're not going to, if the charm and the wonder and, you know, the, the, the positivity aspect of it is not going to come through in the acting, then probably switch the tones and make it darker make it you know more you know grounded or what have you i know some people might not might not like that approach but i think if you can't it, it was it's very difficult to go and actually capture the charm of the animated series and things like that in live action and i'll kind of get to why that is in a second but if you can't do that then you probably should have went to a little bit more of a gritty kind of take on it that's just how i feel about it now the adults in this series like the guy that's playing uncle iroh fire lord uh ozai 
uh, Commander Zhao, uh, Monk Yatsu, things like that. Like they were doing okay. They were doing okay for what they were asked to do and things like that. I think they were definitely putting forth effort. Were they like you know like phenomenal? No, but I could go ahead and actually vibe with their their portrayals. The biggest thing here that's glaring out is that you're asking these kids so the people that are playing the different characters uh the ian osley who's playing Sokka is 21 uh the young lady who's playing katara is 17 and then the little dude that's playing ang i think it's like 14 or so so you have these kids and they are acting in a fantasy thing so it's hard to go ahead and actually, it's hard for kids to go and actually act and put on phenomenal performances because you have to draw from real life experiences. They don't even live life. So it's kind of hard to go ahead and actually, you know, get into that aspect of it. It's also even compounded when you're forced to act in against other kids because now the experiences are there. They're not, they may or may not be giving you exactly what you need to go ahead and actually convey your feelings. And then the last aspect of it is fantasy. You know, you're supposed to go ahead and actually interact with things that are not real to you. I mean, they're, they're made up world and things like that. This isn't like, you know, going down to a corner store or going to a bank or whatever and day-to-day -day interactions or going to school or something like that. This is, you know, big furry flying bison, you know, uh, elemental build, uh, bending and things like that. It's hard to act in fantasy world with being a young adult. And so I say all that to go ahead and actually say these, the three that are leading this did not do a great job. Now, the writing team also didn't do them a whole lot of uh, favors either because there are some lines in here that just were, uh, you know, and could have had better dialogue, could have done better pacing. I think the director could could have and should have done more to go and actually get a little bit more out of these kids than what they did. But kind of is what it is. And I kind of put it in the aspect of because some people will say, well, you could definitely get good acting out of kids on there. Yeah. Most of the time when they're acting against other adults, like when you take uh, Haley Joe Osmond and Sixth Sense or you go ahead and actually uh, Daphne Keene and Logan uh, when she was going and actually doing that or uh, Natalie Portman and The Professional, like they're acting against adults in there and put in real world situations. So it's different. Or even with kids with kids like Stand By Me, it's still real world situations. They can understand that. And you go ahead and actually have like who was like uh, acting savant in uh uh what was his name uh river phoenix and he kind of pushed on that even Corey feldman was really good in that and so all of these you know going actually pushing that or whatever and it's just different types of atmosphere on there so um kind of getting back to the heart of it is that the acting for me was lacking it wasn't horrible but it was noticeable and it really took away from uh, a lot of the scenes in there it took me out of it so acting i'm gonna go ahead and actually give it as a d plus for acting so intangibles, intangibles are the kind of like vibe of the movie. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, just things all over the place on there. So for me, some of the things that I haven't talked about, uh, custom sets and the world been, was great. Like I can't imagine a live action avatar looking better and having a better feel than the way that this did here. I really liked it. I think there was a lot to go and actually vibe to, uh, the bending and the fight scenes were fun. They were engaging or what have you. There may have been a little bit of things off here and there, but overall, I got up for the, the bending and the fight scenes or whatever, really liked it going on. And then Appa and Momo, I actually liked them. Like, I think they did them justice. They are not scary creatures. When you saw the live action in 2010, oh, that was cringe. But here, I think that they were actually done very well. So for me, the intangibles that kind of help tie together if the acting and storyboard isn't quite right on there, I think the intangibles are about a B plus. It kind of elevates it up a little bit. So getting to that final verdict of why did i go ahead and actually say two episodes you listen to me tell you all this kind of stuff and just think about this all right if you're a fan of the series again you should be watching the whole entire first season you know that's off rip but if you're just a main target audience member that you're looking into this for fantasy you're trying to see if this whole world of avatar is worth it i would go and actually say the look of this world is excellent the scenes at the air temple um are really awesome the kiyoshi island setting is really great and, and done well the bending and action scenes are well worth the price of admission and going and actually doing that um you're just gonna have to be real with yourself to see if you can go ahead and actually uh vibe with the direction that they're moving with what they're cutting out from scenes and, and stories and things like that and see if you can go and actually deal with that because that's going to be your biggest uh thing to get over the acting you will have to go ahead and actually lower your standards for the acting in order to go and actually get through it but i think giving a two episode watch at least on there we'll go ahead and actually tell you if you can watch the rest of it as a main target audience member for you casual viewers i'm going to go ahead and actually say it's an interesting world of element building 
and I think you'll be intrigued by that. There are some awesome fights, and the costume sets and designs and things like that are very interesting and keep you entertained. And really, it's going ahead and actually watching the second episode to kind of look at some of the spirituality aspects of things, some of the character development that happens there to kind of really see if this series is something that you're going to want to go and actually stick stick to because the plot holes are there for everybody but if the elemental thing looks cool to you if the set designs look cool to you and if you find some of like the kids charming or uh, appa and momo charming and things like that or what have you i think you're going to go and actually be engaged so again everybody go and actually give it a two episode watch that's what i have for avatar the last airbender on netflix check it out You stayed for the entire review. You are the bomb. You are the avatar. Well, you're the avatar of YouTube. Well, not the whole avatar. Look, you're the master of all three elements doing the like, share, subscribe. That You are the master of those elements. Um, but do me a favor. If you liked any of this, go ahead and actually let me know. If you disagree, go ahead and actually comment down below. Um, also, if you like some of my, hopefully you'll like this review. You might like some of my other reviews that are around here that the algorithm thinks that you might like. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.